Another update within a month. I mean, how many updates do we want? There's so much stuff happening, we can't keep track, and it's this typical thing that happens when once you go to mass production. There's every last thing counts, and every little piece needs to come together so you can make the complete product. And if even one piece is missing, you can't do it. And it doesn't matter how irrelevant that piece is, you just can't do mass production. And that's exactly what I'm going to cover here in this update. I'm also going to cover is about PVT, which we're going to start with. And in the end, I'm going to talk about Motap, which is a feature we haven't really talked about and is super cool. So stay tuned. Let's start with PVT. So PVT is production validation tests. It was a very important deadline that you could see in our timeline. And that one completed. And basically it was a production, a small scale production of about 3% of our total quantity production. And that production is very important because that tells you, can we actually mass produce this product? Yes or no? Well, it completed, the answer is yes. We received the sample, it was signed, sent back, and it's all ready for mass production. Or is it? Because we ran into another IC part issue. This time, it's the volt regulator. Now, the volt regulator is a very common part on any kind of PCB. And usually, our manufacturer sources this volt regulator. We don't need to really concern ourselves with it and they source it together with other very common parts that we don't concern ourselves with. But this time, they did not have the full stock. They were not able to source everything that we needed for mass production. They told us the order was put in on time, but the supplier kept extending the delivery date. And soon after, as we were thinking about, okay, how are we going to solve this issue? One of the first thoughts is let's look aftermarket or third party resellers or official distributors. Let's try to source it ourselves. We were looking around the part not available anywhere and no clear date when it will be back on stock. And then a third party reseller quoted us on something they still had in stock. And as you can imagine, 11 times the original cost we can't do that. <laughs> Usually it's maybe 1.5 to three times the original cost. That is doable, we can cover it, but when it's like 11 times, it's like completely out of budget. It's not gonna be worth it, especially if it's such a common part. So we went for the other route, which is find an alternative brand, uh, an alternative part for this fold regulator. Thankfully, and the reason why I kept repeating common part, it's a common part. You can find other manufacturers of a different brand, but same packaging, same specifications that do the exact same thing and just have a drop in replacement. Meaning we can just swap, we can take out the old one and put in a new one and it should just work all the same. And that's exactly what we did. We looked around, we looked for alternatives. We had a list of alternatives that we could use. We found one that still had stock. We quickly found out a lot of them were also out of stock and suddenly there's been a surge of demand for it. But we found one that was still in stock, placed the order, we received it, I already sent it to Hong Kong. And this first day, uh, the factory will pick up the goods and we're back on track uh, towards mass production. Or, well, kind of, yes, but not exactly that easy. Now the thing is, if you start changing stuff on the PCBA, even if it's one little, little part, you need to test it first because you don't want to end up in a situation or well, at least we don't want to end up in a situation where we do this mass production, huge volume production, and we find out that this one part is screwing up in some way. Maybe there's a, it's not according to specifications as it said in the data sheet, or there's a lot of defects in the batches they delivered, or uh, it's as simple as we, missed something, we didn't see something that was there right in front of us, but we didn't see it when we were going through this whole process. You have to always double check everything. So the plan is that we first make a sample. So we use one of the current PVT keyboards, literally take off the old fault regulator, put in the new one and see, does it work? Yes or no. If, it, if it's not working according to specifications, we can still adjust a couple of things. So it will work according to specifications. And if that is approved, then we can go into another PVT phase, which is again to test, can this part be used in a mass production environment? 
So we'll produce another small quantity of the total to verify if we can do this in a mass production situation. Once we complete that new PVT, then we can do mass production again. Then comes the question, of course, well, how long is that going to take? Because that sounds kind of pretty long, right? We're working as fast as we can. That, that I can assure you. I mean, holy crap. We want to make the production. We want to get this out. You would, we would almost consider not doing the verification. In fact, we didn't really think about it when we were looking for the alternative uh, until we were able to get, make some time to do some reasoning. Um, but what we expect to happen is this first day, the parts will come in at the factory. We'll make a quick sample with the engineers that will just take a couple of days. We can verify if everything is working according to spec. Then we can start planning for the PVT, which should take about maybe one to two weeks after being able to verify the sample. Just assume two weeks. And the reason why it takes very long is not necessary that we need to procure any parts because in fact, we have all the parts in stock at the factory just ready for mass production. Um, instead, it is because after the PCB has been assembled with all the parts, it needs to go to a separate supplier to do the water coating. The water coating is a separate process at a separate supplier and that takes time and there's no way around it. Usually it would take about a week, um, but it's fair to just assume two weeks with everything that's happening in China right now. So two weeks. Uh, then once we get them back and we can do the PVT quite quickly, it just takes a day, maybe two, depending on if some things want to be, we want to be tested. Then we can go to mass production. Now that might be a week. Usually it's a week after doing the PVT. Um, when we make the schedule, it will be probably scheduled in this way. But just for now, assume two weeks, meaning that from this date of this update, check the update date somewhere plus one month or four weeks would be the mass production date. I think that is a safe assumption to make until the moment that we have a final schedule that we've confirmed with the factory and we have an actual date. When that happens, just as I've promised before, I will email you guys with an update notification with the date and probably will have a new video update. Now between now and that moment, you can obviously expect also more video updates if there's anything significant or anything uh, deviating from our plan or if there's very good news there will be another video update so you will be informed if you want to be even more informed on these like little updates or little changes or things that are happening you can always also head over to our discord there is a special channel called stock updates and I occasionally update there a mini update on what is the status of batch X or Y, or in this case, particularly the 60 HE. All right, next part, mod tab. This is one of the features that is vital to the 60% keyboard. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why people even want a 65% keyboard or a bigger keyboard is because they want to have dedicated arrow keys. Now on a 60% keyboard, usually you just map the arrow keys somewhere in the function layer one or function layer two. And this can be anywhere on the keyboard, but not everybody likes to do arrow keys in this way. They rather have a direct access to the arrow keys and want those dedicated arrow keys. Now here comes Motab. So Motab is the solution for this problem. Motab basically can transform a key into a dual function key, meaning it can trigger one action based on a tap and another action based on the hold. Now, a common way of using Motab is on one of the modifier keys, like right shift, where you can hold the key for the right shift, but you can tap the right shift for the arrow key up, for example. So Motab can also be used in other ways on caps lock, for example, where you can tap the key for caps lock, or you can hold it for function layer two and access the whole layer two. So how does that work with the arrow keys? Well, let's jump into the utility and map some arrow keys with Motab. So here we are in the advanced key configurator where you can add a new key here on the right shift, for example, and choose Motab. Now in Motab, you have two boxes. One is for the hold and one is for the tap. So for the tap key, we're going to put on arrow key up. 
and for the hold key we're gonna put right shift and now if we test this you can see that when I tap the right shift it shows arrow up but when I hold the right shift it activates right shift now you would also apply this to the keys below voila you have your full arrow keys available on your 60 he this completes the update there's still a lot that has to happen there are more features that we're going to cover but that's all for another update i hope to see you in that update until next time